Hi there and welcome to yet another video and today I'm very excited because I have a very special guest, someone uh, that some of you are familiar with, uh, someone who's a household name and uh, he's going to share with us uh, his leadership journey, uh, his expertise and for those who read the business daily this is going to be interesting because you'll see the man himself. So without much further ado, uh, welcome Mr. Mike and thank you very much for hosting us, welcoming us to your beautiful home. Uh, Santi Sana. Welcome. In today's discussion, I'd want us to have a conversation on three topics. And the first one is um, how, especially for SMEs, on a managed business, how can we professionalize the businesses? Then the second conversation will be how can someone read through influence and not power? Not about position. Mm. And the last one is, um, are you ready to be coached? Are you coachable? Mm. And for those of us who are watching us, the topics um, I'm referring to, they're all based on his writing. On to the first topic, mm. um, professionalizing family businesses. Mm. And this is a topic which is very close to my heart. Mm. As you know, I run a HR consultancy firm. Yeah. And among uh, my clients is owner managed family businesses. Mm. And as I was sharing with you before the shoot, the instances where we recruit very good candidates, passionate, experienced, <coughs> um, employees were looking to make a mark. But they joined this organization and within four or five months they call you Paminas. Uh, I want to call it quits. So here we are. How can we be able to empower the family businesses? So I want us to look at how can, what can they do? What are family businesses where are they getting it wrong and mm. what do they Where need? are they not professional? Yeah, exactly. What does professionalizing yeah. mean? Yeah. Is it only How HR? would they relate to it? Exactly. Is it only the HR aspect? Is it about putting systems? I mean, you do have an IT background somehow. When you talk Laughing. about <laughs> professionalism, let's start even at defining what, what is professionalism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. W well, um, <laughs> And this is an article you did uh, three years ago at the height of COVID. You can see you did it in November. Mm. Yeah. Mm. A professional is considered professional by contrast to an amateur, right? What's the difference between an amateur and a professional athlete, for instance? A professional gets coaching, is trained, mm. is disciplined competes against the best, mm. um, expects in two, three years time, maybe to break the Kenya record or, you know, to, be better, to go to the Olympics or to whatever. To rise to the top, yeah. So how do you become more professional from being amateurish? Particularly when so many owner, managers, founders, and their relatives, success, uh, succeeding generations, they so say, what's your problem? We're doing very well. We've been going all these years. We make profits. We are growing at a very um, fast I rate. sustain a good lifestyle. Yeah. Why should I, whatever this word professionalize is, you know, why should I bother with it? And why should I pay you, a consultant, your heavy fees yeah. when I'm trying to save money? So what's the the purpose, what's the benefit of professionalizing and what does it mean in this context? And what is at the center of it? Is this steepness of the pyramid? Like I was telling you with Treasury, mm. when Martin O'Draw came in as PS, it was expected that he would have all the power he would make the decisions. He would give the instructions. Being the man at the top. The permanent secretary. Yeah. And so it is with the chairman, with the owner, telling people what to do, giving directions, instructions, and micromanaging. But you're the vision carrier. You've worked so hard to be where yeah, you Yeah, well, you, you may have that. So <laughs> but you're so um, committed to day-to-day -day detailed operationalized work. It's like when I'm in a meeting with such people, every three minutes they're on the phone dealing with some transaction mm. or someone comes into the office for them to putting sign out fires. something, yeah. putting out fires, mm. closing a, a deal, mm. talking to the bank. 
So there's insufficient delegation. And there's insufficient delegation because there's insufficient trust. And there's insufficient trust because there hasn't been a development of the people or that kind of adult-adult relationship where you can empower and feel relaxed enough, not letting go completely, not disappearing, yeah. not going off to play golf every day, mm. but to allow for this softening and flattening that the bigger you get, the more essential it becomes. Mm. And this is when the big challenge comes from family businesses, any businesses, when you have sustained growth mm. and you're not delegating more and bringing other levels of empowered management, yeah. that is professionalizing. And including not just hauling in relatives, not just rewarding loyalty, which again is uh, an unprofessional um, aspect of many family businesses. Mm. If you tell me what I he want to hear, if you've been loyal to me for 20 years, I keep favoring you mm. and therefore demotivating others who are smarter or work mm. harder or were recruited by Permanus or whatever. Mm. So how do you have strategic plans into the longer term for future? Mm. That's professionalizing. Mm. How do you have a performance management system for their implementation and adaptation? Is it just you and your brother when you drive to the industrial area mm. who have the strategic planning conversations? <laughs> okay. Is it at your family Sunday lunches? Yeah. Or is it as a team of a there's senior a, management a team, approach. some of whom are not family members, mm. some of whom may have joined you more recently, that you have this diversity of view that you bring together as an integrator, as a consensus builder with joint ownership mm. to drive performance. Yeah. I could talk much more about professionalizing, yeah. but I think I've touched yeah. some key points. Yes, you have. I mean, it's about competence. It's about empowering the team. And yet, you know, when I interact with many of the business owners, they don't want to micromanage. They would want to have as much time to themselves. How come, what come in, comes in between? Because you want the business to succeed, you want it to go mm. you know, to higher heights, and yet you are the roadblock. Do many of them know? Well, you say they don't want to. Mm. The question is, has it occurred to them not to want to because they're so into it day to day? They're not self-aware. They're not self-aware. Maybe it's what their father did. Yeah. It's what they've done throughout. Mm. It's what they expect is standard and necessary. Mm. Um, That's the way they were taught that and, this is and how yet, business is done. When they bring in people like you and me, yeah. it's an opportunity to create space mm. for such thoughts. Yeah. So then, then you ask the question how to make it happen. Yeah. So before we even go to that, how, how, how then do you bring about change? What are the signs that a business owner needs to look out for? That they need to change? Burnout. Okay. Work-life balance problems. Mm -hmm. um, no time to rise onto the balcony and look down mm. on the ground floor. Have a bird's eye Never view. mind a helicopter. Yeah. No time for strategic thinking, mm. except, as I say, when driving with my brother in the car. Mm. Um, and getting older, succession planning. Mm. That's another big absence. Yeah. Um, and succession planning, not necessarily to your eldest son. Mm. Um, although, if your eldest son is up for it and mm. wants Why it, not? and you and he work well together, certainly. And you know I'm a director of Davis and Shirtliff, yeah. where the chairman, Alec Davis, has been nurturing his two sons at an appropriate pace 
for them to, to rise up the organization yeah. as he eventually does more traveling and other interests mm. and chairing Gertrude's Children's Hospital and so forth. Mm. So that is another big um, requirement mm. that in addition to building the capacity within, you have to have something out there mm. that draws you away from that day-to-day -day routine yeah. of wandering around the factory or the farm or whatever it is, mm -hmm. the office, because... If you don't have something else, you'll feel that you're missing out. And, yes, and yes. And the tendency is then to come back. You need to have it. another attraction, a yeah. pull factor. Yeah. You're not just feeling you're I'm less only, helpful. I'm, I'm only useful when I'm in the business yeah, contributing. Yeah. 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 So you, you start developing a portfolio, maybe voluntary things mm. in, in a business member organization, depending which sector you're in. If you're manufacturing, you join Kenya Association of Manufacturers and mm. contribute there. Gives you a bigger picture mm. because of all your useful experience. It can be a service club like Rotary like I've been in and all the years I've been here in Kenya. Mm. Um, it can be a director of another organization mm. not competing with you. It can be um, uh, focusing on one particular aspect that excites you in your business whilst letting go of other aspects. Like for instance, focusing on your corporate social responsibility mm. aligned with the strategic development goals. Mm. Okay. as you get into your third age yeah. and you can enjoy doing that, making mm. a difference in society, in the communities, mm. um, while someone else worries about the day-to-day -day operations. Yeah. What about the fear that the people you may be handing over, they may not be as good as you are, they may not do a good job. But they may be better. Okay. Why, why shouldn't they be as good? Did you okay. screw up on recruitment? <laughs> Did you have? Ho hopefully did, not. Did you not have a good recruitment agency? You brought agency? Paminas on board, corporate staffing, and you did a good do, job. Do you do you not attract the right people? Yeah. Do you not develop them as yeah. you should yeah. relative to the emerging needs? Yeah. Do you not rotate them around so they get more exposed? But is exposed? that still that fear of letting go? Yes. Yeah. So how well, do you overcome that? So, yeah. if such people bring in people like us. Mm they seek to be influenced. Okay. They may resist it, mm. but the need is for us to act as their coaches okay. and to help them relax out of their fears mm. and look forward to the pluses. Because you may well have justified fears as mm. you've described, mm. but surely you shan't have the bigger fear that results from not doing it. And that's what people don't appreciate. Mm. Because when you don't delegate and empower, what happens is what you started with. Mm. They say, I'm fed up with this. I'm not empowered. I can't make a difference. Why should I be here? Mm. I'm off. Yeah. And so your company gets a reputation for disempowered, disengaged people who are there for a short duration. Mm. They're not engaged, including at the highest level. Mm. We. Yeah. That is what you should be afraid of. Yeah, this is not the right place for me. Mm. Okay. Good. Thank you very much for those insights. So for the business owner or even manager, top level manager watching this, what's the next step for them? The next step is to make space in your mind time, physical time, to think about the sort of issues yeah. you're asking me about, mm. that we are talking about, mm. and that you talk about when you engage with your clients, mm. and that I do as a director, as a coach, as a consultant. Mm. Um, it needs to be added to their priority mm. time mm. as an investment mm. with a return. So you don't wait for a crisis. You that's right. Yes, yeah. become yes. You know, um, but be because so many such business owners yeah. say there isn't a crisis. Yeah. I don't have Why a problem. Why should I bother? Why yeah. should I waste all those fees on him or on him? Yeah. 
I'm just carrying on with it day to day. I've got to close mm. this deal by Friday. Mm. I've got to get that load from the bank now. Yeah. Yeah. Go away. Don't bother yeah. me. Yeah. Don't add to my costs. Yeah. So without that expenditure, mm. with that cost minimization, you have all these other consequences mm. for the longer term sustainability. Mm. Interesting. And it goes back to agency versus important. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And so if you're a business yes. owner and don't, you're only focusing on what is urgent. Yeah. And you're, then, and you're sub, -opt sub optimizing to the short term. Yeah. And presumably you're over focused on what happened in the last three months yeah. and what's happening in the next three months without looking at the longer term history mm. going backwards yeah. and the longer term aspirations going forward yeah. because you're not sufficiently above the day-to-day -day operations. Yeah. Great. So thank you very much. For me, I think the biggest takeaway is create time, create time. That's the biggest thing. Invest, invest. Invest time. Yes. And invest someone mm. who, with whom you can have safe mm. conversations, conversations yeah. about these issues, yeah. who can pose challenging questions mm. and help you find your own answers. Okay. Because you have them, okay. but you haven't invested that time. Yeah. You haven't created that space within which to do it. Yeah. So uh, for a business owner interested um, in someone guiding them, where would they, where would they find you? Um, well, um, I, I have a... Apart a, from reaching out to me so that I get to yeah, you. Yeah, they can reach out to you. <laughs> okay. Reach out to you. Or I have my email uh, okay. address, my website. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, we will post it in the description. So thank you very much for those insights. And for those of us, you know, who've felt touched with some of the things that Mike has addressed. We'll leave his contacts in the description. And you can also find out more about Mike through his website. And also keep up to date with the articles that uh, he does for Business Daily. They are published on a fortnight basis. And Every uh, other Tuesday. Every other Tuesday. And, and my website is www.mike-eldon.com dash dash Not dot .co .ke. So thank you so much for joining us today and stay here for the next topic. Thank you.